Hey guys, how you doing there? There's two types of people that buy two types of thing. There's those that have to have the latest and the greatest and they'll stand outside a shop in the bloody middle of the night, lie on the pavement with their sleeping bags waiting for the latest, the greatest iPhone to come out or the new vehicle that's been released or something to make sure they get it. And there's the second lot, that's the lot I fall into, that wait for the end of the line, like my Hilux here. It's a 2013. That was the last one of that. The new model was a different shape. And prior to that, they had another shape. So I bought that as a demonstration vehicle because it was cheaper. It had, uh, I think, 95 kilometers on the clock. And that straight away whacked like $4,000 off it. And also because it was the end of line, new one was coming out. Everybody wanted that. And I got it cheaper again. And the same goes for this here. My trance, my beautiful trance. I'll just come down here and show you. So Arb helped me buy this. And this was the end of line. They're an expensive bike, bloody good bikes. And there was a new one coming out, a new version. And so these were reduced. And so I bit the bullet, cry once, what was it? Cry once, buy once. And the other thing that I also, I splashed out on was this here, a good bell helmet. And the reason I got a full face one, I wasn't sure about it, but the guys in the shop were really good. And they, they sort of helped me and they said, you really need a full face because there's been incidents of guys going down, coming off, and degloving this part of their, their jaw. I said, what does degloving mean? They said, it's when you rip all the skin right off. <sighs> Didn't want that to happen. Anyway, today it's lockdown, and we are going to take you for a wee ride. And it's lockdown all the time, don't I? It's, it's Monday, so I'm just going to show you this little thing. Look at this, look, check it out. How cool is that, hey? <laughs> yeah, she's brilliant. So yeah, it's still lockdown, it's, it's Monday evening. I'm going down to get my daily exercise and check the houseboat, make sure it's all right, and take you along for the ride. Look at this, look how pink they are, check that out. Beautiful, isn't it? But like spring's come early. It's a good feeling, all my ducks and chickens are laying a load of eggs. Look at these ones here, these are really nice, they're like a, a pink. My old landlord, Murray, he planted these with his wife, Mary, and it just makes the whole place beautiful. You can see the big mess in the paddock that was made by uh, my mate that did all the bloody silage, but that wasn't this guy here. This is a uh, Jamie Bear's tractor, and he's a fence contractor with fence works out of Fox Hill, and he wants to start on the fence, but the paddock's so weird he can't do anything. I pan around here. Over there, that's where Clint works. Well, Clint's got that business construct, and they make these sort of sleep outs. Nothing's going on there. That's where Bruno's been going over, and they've been picking them up on their camera. Their cam. One of those cameras that I should probably have on my houseboat that tells you the time and who it is. Where'd you get that from, Clint? If you flick us an email, let me know. I need one, mate. Because some little bastard's been going down on my houseboat and pinching stuff. Just stopped on the side of the road because I want to show you these guys here. Alpacas. And I wouldn't mind owning one, because I reckon you could really make some good uh, stuff out of their fur. Or what is it, fur? Wool. Yeah, I think it's quite expensive. And I believe their meat's really good too. They're quite friendly, these guys, although last time I come over here, the one that's coming over here now spat at me. Oh no, it wasn't, sorry, it was this guy over here, I just pan around. This bloke here, this big one, he spat at me. Been your mate, eh? Yeah, you know who you are. That's right. And it's bloody COVID right now and you spat at me. Anyway, I won't be putting any livestock in until I have a fence, so. I do a pretty good old job of keeping the grass down, too. Murphy's Law, as soon as I get on my bike, sun's been shining all day, now it's bloody raining. No, oh, we'll carry on anyway. And that's where I catch all my fish, right out there. Wow. Ruby Bay. Look at it. When lockdown's over, I'm going to get out in the kayak. We're going to head on out there. Try and catch some snapper. That's Makita Main down below there. And we've got a track down here. Which is not a mountain bike track. Not a mountain bike track, although you could probably get down there, but I can't. And I wouldn't risk it right now, particularly with lockdown, because it's dangerous. I don't even think you're actually allowed on tracks, I think you know, it goes down the road. So I'll stick to that right now. 
back up. Around about six years ago, I was down there with my two daughters and my son and my nephew, Micaiah, we were shooting a music video and some guy came out and, and touched my daughter, or tried to grab her at least, and I called the police. This place was swarming with police. They let their dog out down the end there and it tracked up to the top of the road and they never caught him. But I was amazed at how many cars, police cars, rocked up here and how quickly it happened. They never caught the guy. There was a guy that perfectly fit the description, but he was actually under house arrest. And I've often wondered if he really was in that house, and it was him, but they never caught him. And my daughter, she changed the colour of her hair. It had an effect on her, but she came right after a while, and now it's just something we talk about. In fact, we laugh about it now, but it could have been a lot worse. They say it's in 20 years, it never happened. It's the first incident ever. Weirdos, fucking weirdos. Man, I tell you what, if I'd... <laughs> We won't even talk about what would happen if I'd been there. I was actually on the beach filming this music video, so I didn't get a chance to... No, I'm not even going to think about that one. Let's carry on the journey and uh, try and think positive. This is Ruby Bay, and can somebody please explain how this happened? I mean, that is stuck right into that. Was that placed over a tree, and then the tree grew up, and then got cut down? What do you reckon? I guess it'll just be another one of life's little mysteries, eh? So soon... There'll be Kahawai in the bay. They're coming in winter anyway. They're out there, but there'll be more of them. And then another six weeks to two months, there'll be snapper out there. Personally, I like chomping on Kahawai better, but I can't wait to put my kayak in the water. And one of my patrons, she wrote to me, is it Georgie or Georgina? Sorry, I've forgotten your name. On something like that, but she's coming here with her dog Pirate because she wants to go fishing. And she's got her own house bus and a place to stay. And I've got a spare kayak that I bought just for patrons. So on that note, if you are a patron, you want to come kayak fishing, I've taken plenty out in the past. Shannon's come out with me. Oh, heaps. One bloke came out last year and he caught a kingfish with me while he's out there and I didn't catch bugger all. But I will take you out kayak fishing out there and I can tell you, when the weather's right, there's no better place on this planet to be. It's magic. I'm now biking through Ruby Bay. A lot of these houses actually, they got flooded quite badly about oh, three years ago. Some got destroyed, some got rebuilt, and it was really pretty bad. Some are abandoned now, and some have been completely remade. That one there I'm going past now, that was on poles. That's a smart place, a smart way to build your house, get the waterfront. This one's been completely redone, it's beautiful. I don't know, I reckon the only matter of time before the water comes. This one here got completely redone, it's awesome. Look at that, it's so cool. That's an, I love that house, I mean, it's brilliant. And a lot of them are like that now. That sort of black colour. That's the trendy colour, isn't it? Black. I don't know, I imagine it absorbs the heat quite a bit, I don't know. But some of them along here are really awesome. That one there's I don't think them was living in or not. That's a beautiful home, that one there. They're all nice place to live regardless. I think a lot of people just go, well, I'll live there and see what happens and enjoy it because it's an amazing place to live. Welcome to the township of Mapua. This is my little town. We're on RNO Road. We're heading down to where the shops are and the wharfers. I just found gold. And only two bucks. Horse poo. I gotta come back and get this with the truck. This is where I go to get a coffee. Tim does a mean coffee in here. It's in RNO Road. And his partner, she's got the place in town that my daughter Dale used to work. That place is called Yaza. And Dayla loved working for her and said she was an awesome boss and she learned how to make coffees there. And if it wasn't for his partner and Yaza, I probably never would have got a coffee machine because Dayla said, Dad, we're going to get a coffee machine. I can make a good coffee. And she sure can. <laughs> Hell of a lot better than I can. These guys have written this on their fence. And how cool is that? Acknowledging all the essential workers that are actually put themselves at risk by being in public. I think it's brilliant. They've done it outside their home. And I just think that's, that's wicked cool people, cool to show gratitude and acknowledge that publicly. And a big hearty thank you to all of those essential workers. I don't know how you, you get through it because people are impatient, they push in line, they do all sorts of, well not everybody, but the other day somebody was just getting impatient and getting too close to the lady in front and it really hit home how people, the veneer is so thin when things get a bit tough. All the cream was gone in the shop and I used cream a lot and it was like a bit gutted, there was no cream and it was like, oh, Never mind, this other lady come in and she was like making something at home and she needed cream too and she was really, really pissed off. She said, oh, there's no cream. And I said, yeah, well, there's a lot of things we can't get right now. It's just the nature of it, isn't it? But uh, 
I really think the people that, that work in the shops and they are putting themselves at higher risk than the rest of us, hats off to you. Can't take my hat off now because I'm biking, but I mean, you know, in the sense, hats off to you. That's the old launch out there, which is Kauri Hull. I ended up buying it off the guy that uh, didn't pay his rent for the mooring that I own. I've never done particularly well out of that mooring. I bought the whole lot for 10 grand. I gave the boat away in the end that was on it. And the guy that owned that boat, well, he got behind and I ended up buying that off him to sort of make it so he didn't have to try and get the money because he was stuck. I've enjoyed fishing off it too. We did a live stream off that launch and it was bloody good. Took Jody out and another couple of young guys and had a bloody good day. But we won't be uh, fishing off it right now. Technically, no, legally you can't you, you can't fish off a boat. But I could fish off the point, I believe, casting off the ground. Someone correct me on that. I'm pretty sure we'd have to go fishing off the beach. Pretty sure we are. Can't see why we wouldn't be able to do that. I mean, if we're allowed to mountain bike around, fishing off the beach would be a lot less dangerous, wouldn't it? But there might be some technical thing, I don't know. I know I'm not allowed to technically fish off a, a houseboat, because I phoned the police last year and they told me that, much to my amazement. They didn't really have a very solid argument as to why I couldn't, just wasn't allowed to. Oh, that's right, she said I could cut myself with the knife. Well, hell, I could cut myself with the knife cutting steak up at home, or peeling an apple. This is Grossy Point, and this is my place where I go fishing right out there and all along you can come down the beach right down here and you can catch kahawai but you've got to know the right time to come you've got to come at the right time you've got to know how to read the water and the birds it's not just a matter of coming in the normal hours of fishing the bird life tells you a lot about what's going on out there i'll come down some days i'll look around i go no nah, not worth it and other days I'll, I'll know straight away i'm going to catch fish so the rod will come out and generally i do okay not always but most of the time i keep my loved ones and myself and fish Time for a pit stop. Right. I'm not very good at holding on these days, so I guess I have to just go in public. Oops. I can't understand why the toilet's close to public health. Oh, I, I can understand why. Maybe if two people in the same building. Now that brings me to something which really has been bugging me. Quarantine is hotels, right? And I know people have been in quarantine in hotels. Uh, Eleanor that stayed with me, she was in a hotel for two weeks. When she came back to New Zealand and she stayed with me. And she said that she would pass other people in the corridor in the hotel. Think about that. COVID-19 is like smoke, it's like steam. It wafts through the air. If you're inside a building, I reckon that quarantine's all wrong. I reckon that they should have little cabins like those holiday parks. Like the cabin I've, I've bought for young Daniel. So each person that quarantines goes into their own little isolated cabin and they hmm, they need to have like a place to go toilet. Well they need to have the they need a toilet with their cabin. So they wouldn't be able to use the group toilet. But implementing that, I mean how much would it cost to set up a quarantine camp? with 200 cabins, all with toilets, and a place you could also use in the future for stuff, it wouldn't be a bad idea, would it? And I'm sure for what they spend on hotels and that, the cost would be, the main thing is though, of course, people will be much safer, because I think, are they still quarantining in hotels with people together in the same lobby, in the same, someone who's doing it, let me know, because that, that bugs me, thinking about that. I'm pedaling up this hill here. There's the footpath beside me. I went past this couple. I'm probably about, oh, I suppose I was three metres away from them. I did a sort of a wide, you know, arch like you do when you're passing people on the street. Come back in, and all I could smell is that horrible perfume that some woman wear. There's one certain one that's just fucking horrible. And oh, holy, it's made me think. If I can smell that, and that's in the air, and if they wafted out. <coughs> A breath of coronavirus delta, I'll breathe it in. So outside, I guess my theory on the bloody, on the uh, outdoor cabins is not so smart because you can smell particles for miles. 
And I was a good, probably four meters from her, I suppose. Food for thought, isn't it? There's so much we just don't know about the Delta strain. I guess we'll find out more as time goes on. There's a lot of stuff that I'm really confused about, don't I? And I've done a, a lot of reading. I've got three friends that are all doctors. And some of the stuff they've told me is like, all right. But a lot of confusion out there and knowing who to really trust. Because there's so much source of information. I'm always into these science peer tests where people are peer tested stuff. But then again, sometimes the individual tests that you read, the scientific ones, they've been lobbied by drug companies. So that's why like the, the peer test was a group of them doing it all together with nothing financial to gain, but just to come out with something. What are they saying with the vaccine? It won't be really known its full effects until, is it 2023? Someone enlightened me, I think that's what I read this morning. I might be wrong on that, yeah, let me know. This here is my dad's house, and it's a good place to leave the bike, because my dad lives opposite where I keep the houseboat, which is really handy. There's a park at his place, all across the road, down the hill, and there's the, the home away from home, the houseboat. This is the little running bit of my day. I'd like to actually get back into running. I don't know how good running really is for you. I think cycling's better. I do a bit of running when I'm hunting. I'm trying to bloody catch up to me mates because I'm always at the end. That's because I hunt with people mostly fitter than me and younger than me, but I used to do a lot of barefoot running. I enjoyed that. It's amazing how tough your feet get pounding the, the road. The easiest surface to run on is actually the road. Manuka. Manuka is great for burning, getting fire going. I picked the those yesterday, pine cones, actually the best part of the pine cone is that part there, that part there, that's where the, the uh, stuff that really ignites, Let's see if we get that into the fire, once that goes you're away laughing. See what I mean, it's ignited already that part just there, it's like fat wood in there. Sometimes you make a fire and you think it's going to go and it doesn't, but if you can get that part of a pine cone just into the fire first, the rest will go. This one will get a bit of flame on it, it'll take off too. She's away mate, she's away. Nice dry pine cones. Good score, plenty of fuel for those cold wet nights. It's a great fuel source. How many of you reckon you get more fitter during lockdown? because you can't do a lot of the things you normally do so utilise that time doing a bit of training or going on bike rides or walks which kind of is good it's a positive up I know there's a lot of negatives but it really helps to look at the positives check this out this tree is buzzing with bees and bees need as much as they can get in the winter because it's short on supply what is this? can someone tell me? what plant is that? Here's the leaf. Check that out. It's just buzzing. Look at these big bumblebees. And they're all bumblebees. I can't see the standard bees. They must feed on it too, but it's just huge. It's got so much in it. Wow. That's so cool. Pink and beautiful. What is it? Who knows? These blossoms would suggest, I guess, that uh, spring's on its way, wouldn't they? Heaps of them. This is outside my dad's home. And back on my bike, and what's really refreshing to see is this piece of land. I mean, technically it's really valuable for real estate because we're right in the heart of Mapua. These guys here, I've chose to keep some land just for being land. 
to grow some fruit trees on and grow some stock. Nice. We're on the home run now and we're going home a different way. I'll show you when we get there. It's a bit longer but it's nice. It's a bit of a hill climb and I like a good hill climb get the old quads going. So here is where we take a different route. That's Ruby Bay up there where I go fishing. And this is Pine Hill Road up there where that yellow sign is. And it's a shared track for bikes. And it's really cool. It goes past all these like farms and little places. And it's actually the same place where I used to go to get on my watercrest, which has since just disappeared in the last year. Start the uphill climb and I'll show you when I get to the top what it's like. Almost to the top. It's great for keeping your heart and your lungs moving. And always try to breathe through your nose when you're exercising. It's better for you. This is not actually where we're going. I've overshot the mark on purpose just to show you the top here. The turn off's about probably 500 metres below me, but I wanted to come up here. Just extend my ride a bit because I'm feeling fit. Then take you guys on a bit more of an excursion. I'm doing a video right now on things you can do during lockdown, and it's mostly own, aimed at hunters and fishermen. God, the flowers up here smell beautiful. And one of the things, of course, is exercise because you lose your hunting fitness during lockdown. And it's a different type of fitness. Oh wow, look at that fancy gate. Well, that's a cool place. So, here's as far as we can go. This is Pine Hill Serenity Vineyard down that road there. And here's the view. Here's the view from around there. It's just beautiful. We're going to coast down about 500 metres and then we're going to turn right over where those pine trees are over there. I liken to biking uphill is to life, you get the cruise down hard now first, easy later on. Same with everything, right, I better put two hands all on the bars because we're going out fast yet. One of my kids' favourite, although those ones are squashed, banana passion fruit. And here's the uh, road to the left, where we go on the trail, I took you up on the right. And you can see a whole lot of passion fruit growing right here, heaps. They're actually a pest. Not everybody likes them. I do. Right, carry on. Have to get moving because the sun will be going down another probably 45 minutes. Oh, look at this beautiful paddock in front of me. This is awesome. These trails are great. This here is the last high point. Well, that's actually not true. My driveway's a high point to get back up the top. But uh, we've started at home and we're just panning around this country. And it's beautiful. And there's the sea right out there. Yeah, it looks like a boat out there, but it shouldn't be. It must be the bar I'm looking at because you're not allowed to be out on the boat right now. Pretty sure that's the bar. Beautiful. Right, we'll carry on down. Yeah, that's just the Mapua bar there. That water, I can see, not a boat. These are so cool. This is a book exchange. And we have them around here. There's one not far from my place, down by the Jester's house. And you put books in, and you can bring your own books, and you can exchange them. They're so cool. I'd like to build one outside my house one day. Someone's gone to a lot of trouble, and they built this really well. In fact, it's actually flashed better than the uh, hut that I bought for young Daniel. That's how you're supposed to flash a roof. That soft bit that bends down the flashing in the top there and your nails all on the crest rather than the trough it's built really well hats off to whoever built that it's built beautifully up ahead of me here is where I used to get on my water crest I'll show you where it is so the interesting thing is that uh, it all disappeared well, there's a tiny little bit left g'day mate there you go Bruno you good boy g'day Pace <coughs> You just have to wait for the open up, mate. Good 
the dogs. Yeah, B. Calm down, Bigsy. Calm down, mate. Calm down, eh? You settle down there, Pace. Hey, that'll do. Calm down. B. Just calm down. Just calm down there. Sit down, Pace. Pace, get out of there. That's enough. Gee, I only just get home. Look at his tail up in the air. Pace, you'll get a bloody boot in your bum in a minute. Sit down, Pace. It'll be a fight. We'll just put Bigsy back up in here. He's actually open, but Pace. He thinks he's like the boss while I'm away. You're a good boy, aren't you? Actually, between Pace and Bigsy, I wouldn't like to say, but this guy's got pretty good. You just behave yourself, Pace. You get back in my truck. Good boy, Bigsy. He's a good boy, aren't you, eh? You're a good dog. He's a lovely dog, Bigsy. Right, you behave yourself, Pace. Boy, God, I have your bloody guts sharp, mate. Good boy, Bigsy. Come on, Pace. Good girl, Pace. Good girl. Good dog, Pace. Good dog, Pace. Good dog. Good dog. Right, we're going to put a rope on you, B. That's right, mate. Good dog, Pace. That's a good girl. Good dog. Oh, Bigsy. What you doing, Bigsy, hey? Hey, what you doing, you big pup? Hey, what you doing, eh? That'll do. Calm down. Don't like that body language here. Straight tail. I'm just wary of... Good boy. Good boy. Got to really watch these dogs. They play pretty hard, those two. Mum and son. But she let him know. She let him know real quick if he's doing too much. But she's the one that taught him how to hunt, and that's pretty much what she's doing there. Teach me how to stop something. Be calm! Get him, B! Heal up! Good boy! Be calm! You get back on the right, mate. Get, good boy! Get in! Get him, B! Be calm! Be calm! Good boy! That's a good dog. Good boy! Okay, where you go? Good boy, leave it. Eat up, Poe. Eat up, Big Seat. Eat up, B. In the box. Eat up, Pace. Where you go, Pace? Where you go? Get him, boy. In the box. In the box. Get him, boy. Get in. Good dog. A bit funny taking food out of the automatic feeder, but some duckies, like this one here, the original ducky, don't know how to use a feeder. She hasn't eaten all day, have you? The ducks can go in and out of this place now, so they can roam the orchard. And at night, g'day mate, we can just top up here. Here we go, and ducky straight into it. She's going to tell the other ones to leave it, because she's the boss. Duck, 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 duck. It takes one brave duck to go in first. There they all go, because Ducky's the boss. Here goes a brave one. And then once one gets in, they all muscle in. Oh, she's, yep, they're right out. There we go. I oh, know. Yep, they're going to come in out. There we go. Oh, this one is chasing the other one away. They have their own order. Now they're all going to storm it. This evening's dinner is one of my favourite. It's left over from yesterday. It's this young suckling pig. Look this out. Oh, really? You'd like that, wouldn't you, pal? You caught it. Yeah, that's for me. You might get a bit later on, but... After exercise, I think eating protein is really good. Good jumbo and chewing. So my meal tonight will be pork and boiled cabbage and silver beet from the garden. And I might have some blueberries. I've got this problem when I start eating. I can't stop, so I'll finish this video so I can turn to that pig because I want to I wanna eat it. Hey, thanks for following me, and thanks for watching the video. I'll try and make as many of these sort of videos as I can while it's locked down, because I know there's a lot of people in a much worse situation than me that can't go anywhere, and some of you have been locked down for bloody months. I really feel for you guys. Hang in there. Everything in life does pass. It will get better again. Just uh, use this time wisely to prepare for other things you can do in the future when lockdown's over. And be good. Can't be good. Well, try and be careful. We'll see you later. Right. I'm going to eat a pig. Mmm. Did I just chew a hoof then? Thank you. 
Right, you're good. Mmm.